Welcome to Elon Musk Viral. Elon SpaceX just crashed. A Russian spy satellite, SpaceX has actively been involved in the Russo-Ukrainian war. Russia was behind a cyber attack targeting American commercial satellite internet company Viasat. UK and US intelligence suggests the attack began about an hour before Russia invaded Ukraine on 24th February. In this video, we're going to discuss Elon Musk just destroyed a Russian spy satellite. This changes everything. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick to the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. It caused outages for several thousand Ukrainian customers and affected wind farms and internet users in Central Europe. Officials have long believed Russia was to blame but lacked the evidence to say so publicly. Viasat provides high-speed satellite broadband to commercial and military customers. After Russia's invasion, many feared Ukraine's internet access would be cut off, either through cyber attacks or the destruction of internet infrastructure or both. While there have been some temporary outages and attacks on government websites, for the most part, there hasn't been an internet blackout yet. Even so, after Ukraine's Vice Prime Minister, Mikhailo Fedorov tweeted an appeal to Elon Musk, the billionaire sent help. Musk promptly obliged and tweeted in response, Starlink service is now active in Ukraine more terminals en route. Soon after, in March, Musk claimed that Russia had jammed Starlink terminals in the country at a time, following which he also said that after a software update, Starlink was operating normally. Starlink, at least so far, has resisted all hacking and jamming attempts, tweeted Musk. Ukrainian fighters are using it too, and some say the service is helping them beat the Russians. Writer David Patrick Karakos of Unheard interviewed one soldier in eastern Ukraine who said, Starlink is what changed the war in Ukraine's favor. Russia went out of its way to blow up all our comms. Now they can't. Starlink works under Katusha fire, under artillery fire. It even works in Mariupol. With Musk, however, Fedorov got exactly what he asked for from a CEO who loves attention and has a habit of jumping into well-publicized problems with his own novel, Musk Company Branded Technological Solutions. Musk has demonstrated a willingness to get involved in the Russian-Ukraine conflict in other ways too. He tweeted SpaceX's logo at a Russian official who threatened the International Space Station would fall out of the sky if Russia was cut from it. While Musk usually collects accolades for his proposals, it's worth pointing out that these efforts don't always pan out in his practice. In 2018, a random Twitter user asked him to save a group of teens trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand. Musk assembled a team of engineers to build an escape pod out of SpaceX rocket parts. It ultimately wasn't used in the rescue, and unfortunately, the laudable effort ended with Musk tweeting that one of the divers who saved the children was a pedo guy. Musk won the subsequent defamation lawsuit. The terminals have come from a hodgepodge of sources. A spokesperson for the U.S. Agency for International Development said it has spent about $800,000 delivering 5,175 of them to the Ukrainian government. It purchased about a quarter of them and Starlink donated the rest, plus an additional 175 to others in the country. The Polish oil company PKN Orlin has donated some, but the company didn't respond to questions about how many. Nabuk, the official at the Ukrainian Ministry of Digital Transformation, said his agency had received Starlink donations from multiple European Union allies, though he declined to say from which countries or how many terminals one of the major issues with previous iterations of satellite internet is the delay. But Starlink's constellation of satellites is relatively new technology. They operate in low Earth orbit, so the delay is measured in milliseconds rather than seconds. Elon Musk's SpaceX was poised to launch a long-delayed navigation satellite for the US military, crying for a second day to complete its first designated national security mission for the United States. A successful launch would be a significant victory for Musk, a billionaire entrepreneur who spent years trying to break into the lucrative market for military space launches long dominated by Lockheed and Boeing Co. It marks SpaceX's first so-called national security space mission, as defined by the US military, SpaceX said. Most of the basic Starlink kits donated to Ukraine include a 23-inch wide receiver dish that needs to be mounted outside, and a cord that connects to a simple router that projects a Wi-Fi internet signal. Internet speeds vary, but one Starlink enthusiast in Kyiv, Oleg Kutkov, said in a phone interview that he often gets 200 megabits per second download speeds, a speed that is fast enough for most, if not all, household internet use. Earlier, the general assumption was that it was launched to inspect Russian equipment in the orbit instead of U.S. spy satellites. 
that a majority of experts are of the opinion that the Russian satellite is doing exactly what people have been doubting this whole time, that is, stalking US space assets. Ground combat units normally communicate in a variety of ways that can leave them vulnerable, fiber optic lines are hard to jam or tap, but also difficult or impossible to lay in a chaotic combat environment where they can be destroyed. Radios are susceptible to jamming, and the more distance between them, the less effective they are. Combat units using remote weapons, such as drones, need to sustain communication links with those systems, also susceptible to jamming. The US military has sophisticated systems to withstand all this, but the Ukrainians don't. Russia's strike by ASAT missile did not just shatter Cosmos 1408, but sent debris fragments on various trajectories, some lower and some higher than the original orbit. According to the Telegraph, the Aerial Reconnaissance Unit, Aero Rosvitka is using Starlink to monitor and coordinate unmanned aerial vehicles UAVs, enabling soldiers to fire anti-tank weapons with targeted precision. Only the system's high data rates can provide the stable communication required. While Starlink ground units provide fast and secure communications, they also emit a detectable radio signature, plus they need to be used outdoors where overhead reconnaissance could find them. Musk's advice, turn on Starlink only when needed. Place antennas as far away from people as possible, and power the unit with solar panels plus battery pack. Instead of a generator to eliminate heat and smoke giveaways, SpaceX had developed Starlink as a civilian system to provide internet service in rural areas and underserved parts of the world. Not as military technology, but its use in shooting war makes it an obvious and perhaps legitimate target for the Russians, like any other piece of command and control hardware. Musk himself has said the probability of Russians attacking Starlink terminals in Ukraine is high. Here's the more fraught question of whether Russia might ever attack the satellites that form the backbone of the system. Russia has tested anti-satellite weapons, which the United States most likely has too, despite a US ban on testing. But with thousands of satellites scheduled for the Starlink system, it may be impossible to shut down. The automatic orbital adjustments change the forecasted trajectory and therefore make collision predictions more complicated, according to Lewis. Starlink doesn't publicize all the maneuvers that they're making, but it's believed that they're making a lot of small corrections and adjustments all the time, Lewis said at the time. But that causes problems for everybody else because no one knows where the satellite is going to be and what it's going to do in the next few days. Even so, having Starlink seems on the surface to be a good thing, even if it's as overhyped as everything else Musk does. Internet access has been an inextricable part of this invasion and a way for Ukrainians to stay connected to each other and the outside world. Ukraine's government, as demonstrated by Fedorov's tweets, has used the internet to make its case to the rest of the world and counter pro-Russian disinformation from the country's notorious internet propaganda arms. Ukraine has the support and sympathy of much of the world, while Russia is buried under economic sanctions and more companies are pulling their services and products from the country every day. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we'll be back soon with another video.